First of all, let's do the news. Yes, uh, and first of all, uh, last week we featured a motorcycle, a BMW, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. a BMW in, uh, in your Ariel Atom film, and we've had a number of complaints that we didn't give enough information about it. So, James, would you like to address that? Yes, indeed, bikers. It has a, uh, a cable-operated anti-hopping clutch. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> anyway, now we are going to do the news, and I want to begin by talking about Nissan, OK? Uh, they've announced they're going to make a, a new electric sports car, which they're going to exhibit uh, the Geneva Motor Show, which is soon. That's a picture of it there. And they've sent us lots of details about this car. Interestingly and unusually, they've also sent us a, a description of the sort of person who will buy it, an actual biography, and I'm quoting now from Nissan themselves. They say, the driver, OK? Daniel... So this guy doesn't exist, they've made him up? Yeah. Well, they say, Daniel, an S-Flow owner, works in tech, but lives for the weekend. <laughs> On Friday night after work, he gets behind the wheels of his S-Flow, which instantly links with his pocket PDA. He sounds like a bit of a... It prank. does, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, OK, and it determines the fastest route to his girlfriend's home. On Sunday, he drives through the mountains for leisure. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's built float. Anyway, and then he gets home eventually and it's all charged up and he lives in Barcelona. Hang on a minute, he's called Daniel. Could he be the Daniel from the Elton John song? Yes, that's who he was writing. <laughs> oh, hang on. Daniel is travelling tonight in his stupid electric sports car. I can see the red tail lights. No, he wouldn't be able to. It's battery powered, isn't it? They'll have gone <laughs> Daniel's girlfriend is bouncing around on a man with an ast and the A. Yes. <laughs> I've just had a thought, on, Hammond. Is, I like this. <laughs> what is James's middle name? It's Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, anyway, that's enough Daniel. Bad news. Right. 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 You see the girl with the red beret on? Yeah. She's from Albania. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh. And can I just ask, is it right that the word car means... <laughs> and peach? Yes. I thought you made it up. No, he didn't make it up. She's, okay, she's actually from Albania. Oh, fair enough. Now, actually, I have got some more information on this. Um, this uh, you, you know, in the film, I said um, that, that some of the cars might be stolen. I know you did. That was shocking. Yes, it was. Anyway, I've got some information here on it, OK? Albania's public order minister uh, was on his way to Greece recently to sign an agreement with his opposite number in Greece on cross-border crime, OK? And as a formality, the Greek police did a check on his car and found it was nicked. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the public order. And then, no, just so I balance this out, OK, uh, neighbouring Macedonia, um, the interior minister was very embarrassed when police noticed her car was actually registered to David Beckham. <laughs> That, that actually happens to footballers quite a lot, though, doesn't it? Because there were two um, AC Milan players. They had their Range Rovers nicked. Do you know where they turned up? Oh, Bournemouth? No, it was Albania. No, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, though, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, genuinely, Albania is a fascinating, brilliant country. It's very it pretty as well. I mean, Absolutely really beautiful. Coastline. Really loved it. Anyway, it is now time to do the news. So BMW has launched a whole sort of eco-flavoured range of cars, um, beginning with the letter I. They've got two so far, the I3 and the uh, I8. Do you want to see a picture of them? Here they are. Very difficult to see out of. <laughs> <laughs> or, or get in, if that's not going to work, is it? Yeah. Oh, really? What is this current obsession with putting I in front of things and believing that makes them special? I mean, it started with the iPod, yeah, fair enough. But we're going to have an eye sandwich and eye shoes. I don't... What, I, what? I don't want an eye infection. No. I don't want one of those, though. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like, if you don't mind, to talk about magpies. It's a car show, Jeremy. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with me, because there is an organisation called the Songbird Survival Trust, OK? Now, they're calling for a cull on magpies. Well, not, they're not calling it a cull. They're saying they want to do an experiment. Is it an experiment to see what happens to a magpie if you fire a shotgun at it? <laughs> yes, it is, basically. Now, I agree with them on this, but for different reasons. They say, if you get rid of magpies, then we'll have more songbirds, OK? Because magpies eat songbirds. But there's a better reason than that that I can think of. Magpies are a menace to road safety. They look like they'd be bad drivers. Super they? idiot. No, listen, I'm not a superstitious man, OK? I'm not a superstitious man. You know, I can walk under a ladder, I can put my head in a lion's mouth. That's not a superstition. Well, I've got a hat on my new shoes. I do all those things, but I do salute magpies, OK? 
Now, the problem is, because the magpie is the only bird in Britain these days, you're just driving along just doing this the whole time. <laughs> no, that's... No, you don't just salute. If you see a single magpie, one on its own, you have to say, morning, Captain, three times. You go, morning, Captain, morning, Captain, morning, Captain. Salute three times, spit three times, <laughs> Touch your right elbow with your left hand, one, two, three, three times, and then lick your thumb and make a cross in the top right-hand corner of the windscreen. You don't have to do that. You do. You do you do that when you see a magpie? Every single time. <laughs> it is quite a fab, and it's difficult on the bike, but I do. Uh, <laughs> morning, Captain, morning, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, uh, 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 and then you carry on. You've both got, you've got, that, you've both got that completely wrong, because the, the, what, what you're supposed to do, it's only the first magpie of the day, and you salute and say, morning, Mr. Magpie, and you don't do it in the afternoon, because that's bad luck, and you don't do the second one. Rubbish! How do you know it's the first okay, magpie of the day? You listen, don't join listen. the village people sorry, every time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is anybody here Jewish? Yeah. You are? Somebody said, well, Jewish? Hands up. You are. Do you know what we're talking about? Yeah, Newcastle. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Newcastle. I know where you're going with that. It's just that our studio director is Jewish and has no idea what we're talking about with this. Because he said, well, perhaps Jews don't do it. Is there anybody else Jewish who has no clue? You're Jewish, and you salute magpies. No, but we know about it. You know about it, but you don't do it. Ah, interesting. So it could be a religious thing. I don't know. Do Jewish people have more road accidents as a result of magpies? No, fewer. <laughs> Jewish people will have fewer road accidents because they're not spending all day long they doing this. Or... <laughs> well, anyway, look, to cut to the point here, OK, whether you do my simple salute, which is correct, or his full Morris dance, OK? <laughs> It, we need to stop it, OK? We need to stop it, because the advantages are huge, because if you get rid of magpies, you have more songbirds, so the air sounds nicer. You know, you've got tits and... Why can I say tits? <laughs> sparrows. You've got sparrows and all that sort of thing, and that would be brilliant. Plus, we don't have to do that, and that will make the roads safer. So there we are, top gear, top tip. Kill all magpies and kill them now! <laughs> <laughs> Who told you about the eyes and ears and nose and chin. The, well, the, the, I've sort the, of the, accumulated the... them over the years. For God's sake, nobody tell me any more that I have to do. I'll add them <laughs> What you have to do? Team. No! It'll Take be your trousers minutes. down, yeah. look at somebody in the next car, oh, oh, a van oh. driver, and go, <laughs> mm. That's a tradition. <laughs>Okay, it's a picture of it here. It's called The Countryman. Um, it's not a funny name. <laughs> this is the biggest car in the world, okay? You might think this is a stubble field. It isn't. It's the Brazilian rainforest. These are trees. In fact, yeah. So that's a mini in the same way that you were a midget. Anyway. Exactly. No, and the ridic you might think, well, that's all right. You know, I fancy a mini. I like the idea of a mini. But I want more space. But the ridiculous thing is, it's only... Well, the one I drove the other day only had four seats. No, you're right, actually, because you'd, you'd think there'd be a middle one in the back, but there's a sort of styling feature. <laughs> no, there is a good picture of it here. There's just two bars that run all... No. Look. Look what's, what's the point of that? It is a civic sculpture. It is. It's like trading up from a three to a four-bedroom house and then filling the fourth bedroom with a waterfall. Why would you do that? It's just stupid. It's the stupidest car I've ever seen, and it gave me crabs. What? Crabs? <laughs> I meant cramp. Why did I say crabs? <laughs> How can a car give you crabs? I don't know, tell us! Now, you know Infinity? Oh, well, when James explains how something works, oh, yeah, Infinity no. just <laughs> stretches out in front of you forever. No, not endless time and space. Infinity, the Japanese car maker. Oh, yeah. yeah they're yeah. like, they're Datsuns with a yeah. bit of velvet in them, basically. A bit like Lexus's to Toyota. Well, at the Geneva Motor Show, which is soon, they are go they've announced they're going to show off a new direction they're going in, OK? And this is the car they'll be showing. It's a concept. And I just think it looks like an ordinary car that's melted. But <laughs> what I'm worried about with this is they've called it the urethra. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, no, it's not actually spelt urethra, but it's, it looks like it's pronounced urethra. Now, isn't the urethra the bit in your old chap? No, I thought you... Isn't it the tube that connects your kidney to your bladder? That the no. wee goes along to get from your kidney to your bladder? No, well, I think it's the... You just keep saying yes to... Well, how come you're an expert on... You look like a scaffolder. <laughs>
Are you actually a wee wee doctor? You are? What are you really? I'm a car salesman. You're a car salesman. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you want a melted car named after a tube with urine in it, that's the car for you. <laughs> Honda, which is a Japanese car company, okay, they've developed a hat. <laughs> they've developed a hat that knows what your hair is thinking and then translates those thoughts in such a way that it can drive the car. Have you gone completely mad? No, seriously, I absolutely haven't, okay? They say that hair transmits neurological information, okay? The hat picks that up, translates it. So if you think, I'd like to turn the wipers on, your hat knows that, and the wipers go on. Because of your hair, tell Yes. Me. Your hair... <laughs> your hair cannot drive a car. Your hair isn't actually very good at being hair. In fairness. Yeah. <laughs> what if you've had a hair transplant? Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, exactly. What would Gordon Ramsay do? No, no, wait, 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 think about it. If he gets stopped by the police for speeding, he can go, it wasn't me. <laughs> I, I bought my hair from a man in Los Angeles. Are we heading for a future where a policeman stops you and says, do you know how fast your hair was going there, sir? No. It's out of my hands completely. Or, Does it have if... to be your hair on your head? Can Enough. Can you buy some pants? <laughs> what, Honda pants? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is it? But imagine being like, because 17-year-olds, they think down there a lot, don't they? Imagine a 17-year-old boy driving with his pubes. <laughs> a million miles, oh, it'll be terrifying. Oh, now, I'll tell you what, there's a radio station in Germany, OK, offered a, a 20,000 quids worth of Mini Cooper as a prize to any listener who would do the zaniest, craziest thing, OK? And the chap who won it, won it because he had the word Mini tattooed on his... Face. No. Arse. Elbow. No. Here. Toes. Toes. On his gentleman sausage. <laughs> mini. If you think about it, mini isn't really the first word you'd think to have a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have the word enormous, but in, ti <laughs> in tiny letters, so the scale it must be. It's going to be cars, though. I'd rather have Alfa Romeo. No, actually, I wouldn't have Alfa Romeo. I'd only get Alf on mine. I wouldn't have. <laughs> I think actually having Alfa Romeo tattooed on your old chap is a bit of a leap of faith given our experience with <laughs> Alfa. Oh, generally... it's not working yeah, again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened before that an Alfa Romeo it has. Uh, that's the end of the news. You buy a used car, you'll do checks to make sure the gearbox is working and the differential isn't all broken, but you don't do anything to check the state of the interior. No, it is really weird because I, mean, I could cope if I thought a car had missed a service or two or something like that, but once I found out that one was full of nasal mucus, <laughs> I'd have walked away. Has anybody here bought a used car recently? Like, nobody's bought a used car. <laughs> That's amazing. You, so you bought a used car? Yes. Yeah. Well, and did you check it out for... Scabs. Scabs. <laughs> Blood? <laughs> Feces? Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. Liverpool. You're from Liverpool? Liverpool. Well, I said bought. Anybody here bought? <laughs> oh, here we go again. You have. Did, did you check out if it's got any finance owing on it? Finance. You did finance, you did checks on the mechanical components. Did. did you see if there were anybody else's bottom mushrooms growing in the car? <laughs> you didn't. No, I'm I, very oh. surprised. I'm really quite surprised by that. Hey, now there is a new Lamborghini on the way. It's so secret, this, and so new, we don't even have a picture of it yet. But we can tell you that it's the replacement for the Murcielago and it's going to have a 700 horsepower V12. I fear, though, it's going to be rather overshadowed by this, OK? Now, this is a new American car, OK? And uh, let me just give you the headlines, if I may. Horsepower, 2,000. So that's twice what you get from a Bugatti Veyron. Top speed, 300 miles an hour. 0 to 60, one and a half seconds, and it holds the lap records, as we can see here, at the Nürburgring and the Virginia International Raceway. Hold on a second. 0 to 60, 1.5 seconds. Yep. Why haven't we heard about this? I don't know. Well, probably because well, the bloke who did it swallowed his tongue. <laughs> He's still stuck down the back of the driver's seat. They can't yeah. fish him out. Oh, oh no, 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 I apologise. I apologise. I hadn't read this thoroughly. <laughs> You look at this, you go, here it is, those are the things, the horsepower goes, we will not quit until we achieve these goals. <laughs> it's just a wish list. It's just a wish list of things. No, I think the biggest problem with this car, though, is its name. What is it called? The scrotum. <laughs> the, the sweat crack. It's called the dagger. Well, that's all right. This is quite dagger, a good thing. No, da like no, <laughs> dagger, like, little piece of poo stuck in a sheep's <laughs> anal shrubbery. <laughs> 
No, this is a dagger. Yes, this is no, that's a it dingleberry is. you're thinking no, of. No, I'll turn on dingleberry. It's but not you, a dagger. There's... Nobody's ever stood over a body and said, oh, what was the weapon? I think he used a dingleberry from the sea. Yes, sir. You know, there are certain words that have two meanings. A dagger yeah. is not a dingleberry. It is. It's not. Lady Macbeth didn't say, is this a dingleberry <laughs> I see before me? Turns out it's a great name, and if they can achieve all their goals, it'll be a fantastic car. Now, that's enough new cars. Really is enough new cars. Um, Bentley have announced that in the next James Bond book, 007 will be driving a Bentley Continental. Wow. There you go. What is that? The next James Bond. Look at him. <laughs> he looks like an account name's Bond. <laughs> oh, I'm licensed to kill. What is the book called? On Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. <laughs> the Moon Ledger. <laughs> Live and Let's File. <laughs> I should just point out that that man is the author of the book. Ah, oh, not sorry. The, not the new Bond. I don't know why he'd want a modern Bentley anyway, because I drove one in Albania recently. It was terrible. <laughs> I was killed in it. You were, so it wasn't all bad, but it was understeered a lot. Really big news, the new car from Pagani is out. The Zonda's gone. This is the new replacement for it from Pagani. Look at that. Mm. It's an astonishing 730 brake horsepower, 6 litre AMG V12, specially designed for the car, very technical. It's got a carbotanium body, so that's carbon fibre, but actually titanium woven in with the carbon fibre in it. Yes, can I just interrupt? What worries me is we liked the Zonda because it was completely bonkers, yes? Doesn't that look just a bit sensible to you? Isn't it a bit like Lady Gaga going, no, 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 I'm a musician now and I want to start writing opera? It's a bit serious. Yeah. A bit grown up. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Here's the interior. Look at that! Ooh. That's clearly not all sensible and boring, is it? That's, that's I, like, I like the colour of that, actually. Well, if you want that colour, James, just have a baby. Get it eight times a day. <laughs> What's it called? It's called the her. <laughs> it is. It's spelt H-U-A-Y-R-A. The, the here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's written here, just in case you forget. Oh, that's the noise you make when you're sick in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> if you two are just going to mock, you won't mind if I test it on the program, then, will you? Not at all. You knock yourself out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, don't actually. If you're driving fast, then uh, I got that. <laughs> you know the Fiat 500. We love it. There is a new one. Here it is. It's called the 500 Twin Air, and it's got a tiny 875cc two-cylinder engine in there, and it produces so little CO2 that it's actually free to go in the congestion charging zone in London. Yeah. And it's a great little thing. The thing is, when I heard it had got a two-cylinder engine, I thought that won't move. But it goes like the clappers, it and it's it brilliant. It sounds like a billion hornets have got stuck in someone's bicycle spokes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fantastic. There is one problem with this fuel-saving car, though, isn't there? What? It uses quite a lot of fuel. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Can't argue with that. We did a test last week. We left the uh, track here, went back to London, so you've got a bit of country road, a bit of dual carriageway, a bit of city driving, and it averaged 38 miles to the gallon. Um, and we did the same route in a Volkswagen Polo Blue Motion, and that did 50 miles to the gallon. Mm. So that's, uh, there you are, we have a Top Gear top tip. If you want to buy a car to save fuel, buy this one and don't save any. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you won't save anything, but you will have an enormous amount of fun not saving any money. That's, that's, and that's fine fun. by me. <laughs> Anyone here from London? Yeah. Okay, right, you're all familiar with the Westway. I've got a picture of it here. It's a big snaking ribbon of tarmac that sides into the centre of the city. The idea being it gets you in as quickly as possible and out as quickly as possible. Now, for many years, it's had a 50 mile an hour speed limit, which is too low, but they've decided this week to lower it to 30. 30 miles an hour? I'm sorry, I tried driving down there earlier this week at 30 miles an hour. I damn nearly caused 27 accidents. <laughs> this little girl on a scooter was like, what are you doing, you idiot? You know but isn't it supposed to be a temporary speed limit whilst they do some works underneath the bridge bit or something? Yes, yes it is, but 
when they introduced the 70 mile an hour speed limit on you know all British motorways in 1965 they said then that was temporary here we are 46 years later we still got it speed limits are like herpes are they yeah you get them <laughs> never get rid of them <laughs> never I've got to say, it doesn't look Why very Why is that temporary. man nodding again, I know, yeah. <laughs> I've got speed limits. <laughs> but this road, OK, this road's run by Boris Johnson, yes? Now, Boris Johnson wrote a piece in Her Majesty's Daily Telegraph last week in which he said he didn't want to be forced to wear a helmet while skiing because, as an individual, he should be allowed to make up his own mind and he doesn't want governments telling him what to do. <clears throat> Boris, <clears throat> I give you that. <laughs> It is weird, isn't it? Because we all think of Boris Johnson as being cuddly and affable and having slightly funny hair, but history will remember him as Boris the Oppressor. He is. <laughs> Boris is a Russian name and this is. is a Russian thing to do. But listen, Boris, OK, when your roadworks or whatever it is you're doing under that bridge are finished, I want to see that 30 limit gone. Can I just talk about speed cameras? Does anybody mind? You know, um, Oxfordshire Council announced recently, well, last year, it was going to turn all the speed cameras off, and when they said that, all the road safety groups were running around going, everybody will be dead in 10 minutes as a result of this. Well, six months have now elapsed, and the road safety groups are saying they don't know what effect the switch-off has had on accident figures. How can they not know the, what the accident But they say the figures aren't in yet. But, but I always know pretty much immediately when I've had an accident. Yeah. yeah. All... <laughs> there, are, there are clues. Big noise, sudden stop, that sort of thing. Oh, well, see, the shape. thing is, I've done some digging. In a three-month period in 2009, when the cameras were on, there were 35 accidents, OK, at speed camera sites. In the same three-month period when the cameras were switched off in 2010, there were 35 accidents at speed camera sites. No difference. No difference at all. Right. What, what about fatalities? Fatalities, there were none with the cameras on and none with the cameras off. Really? Now, what's interesting about this is that you'd think, OK, well, now, so it's made no difference and saved the council a fortune by getting rid of the speed cameras, but they're now saying the police are going to take over running them and turn them back on again in April. I thought they said they couldn't afford to run. No, but the police are doing it. No, but this is actually very good news, though, because that must mean they've solved all the other crimes. <laughs> well, the police, yeah. <laughs> Actually, actually, they have... Well, they haven't solved them all, but they have caught that bloke who nicked the lead off my roof. They you, off roof. you had lead stolen from your roof? Yeah, all of it. Only you would be the victim of a crime from the 1950s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was the, was the villain chased by a black and white policeman blowing a whistle by any time? Well, did you yes. ever a Forbes effort? <laughs> no, the thing is, I'll tell you the thing is, OK, I live in Oxfordshire and I was burgled quite recently and they haven't caught her yet. Her? Well, I'm not sexist. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. See, we're not. Ferrari, OK, this year's F1 car, they said, is going to be called the F150, OK, that was the name of it. But then they got a call from Ford's lawyers saying, no, you can't do that because we own the name F150 and that will cause confusion. So, let's have a look at the Ferrari. This is the F150, this year's F1 car. Now let's have a look at Ford's F150. <laughs> No, it's easy to see how the confusion could arise between the two if you look at them together. Mm, yeah. And what would be worse than getting pole position sitting on the grid thinking, right, here we go, my big F1 race. Why is there a man in a cowboy hat sitting next to me? Oh, yeah. no, I'm in a pickup truck! <laughs> Ferrari actually say, and I'm quoting now, it's difficult to understand Ford's viewpoint on this matter. And I'm sort of with them. Oh. But anyway, they have changed the name. The Ferrari Formula One car is now called the Ferrari F. Henry Ford is a massive peach. <laughs> <laughs> Two things with the same name don't necessarily have to be confused. Like Hammond can mean a massive organ, or it can... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Ferrari, let's get it all back to cars. <laughs> Ferrari has made a new car, OK? It's their first ever four-wheel drive car, their first ever hatchback. Got a picture of it here. It's called the uh, FF. Ooh. Now, it's got a V12 direct injection engine, 6.2 litre. 208 miles an hour. It's going to cost £250,000, which is a lot. But I think that's fantastic because it's a return to what I would call the shooting break. You know, the two plus two estate. And we haven't seen one of those since the Lancia HPE. Oh, yes. And the, um, do you remember the, the Volvo P1800 ES? Yeah, that wasn't very brilliant, though. No, it wasn't. It was terrible, but it looked good. It did look brilliant. And the Reliance Scimitar, which you can see. Uh, 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 oh, no, it did. It looked No, good. you've forgotten uh, the rules. Oh, God. The law of the land states that if you say Reliance Scimitar, you then have to have a comma, and then you say... 
Princess Anne has one of those, you know. <laughs> but you also have to say it in such a way that you assume that no one else knows that. Because it's extraordinary, I can't think of another person who is so associated with a car or vice. I mean, nobody ever says, Henry Kissinger, you never had an Escort RS 2000. <laughs> you didn't, you know, did he, to be honest. She is commonly thought of as being the hardest working royal, isn't she? I mean, she yes. does a lot of work for a lot of people, raises millions of pounds all over the world, and yet she's still just known for having had a reliant scimitar. It must be I know, it's just because you think about it, her daughter is getting married, isn't she, later yes. this year, and you just know the commentary is going, they'll wheel out a Dimbleby, or a Witchell, and the commentary will be, there's the bride's mother looking radiant. She has a reliant scimitar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never driven a Reliance Scimitar, you know. I know someone who's got one. Do you? Yeah, Princess Anne. All oh, right. <laughs>something very exciting. Valencia Stratos is back! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I know, it's one of the greatest cars yeah. ever made, the Stratos. What they do to create this one, take uh, a Ferrari 430, remove the hideous body. Oh, I'm sorry, James, Thank I you. forgot you've got one. <laughs> anyway, they remove the foul, disgusting... It's all right. Oh, yeah, anyway, uh, and then fit that new one, and I just think that's fantastic. How much is it? Half a million quid. Oh, that's... Now, if that's a bit rich, OK, don't worry, because... The Jensen Interceptor is back! Oh, yes! There's a car! <laughs> now, that, that genuinely is amazing. What you do is you take an old Jensen Interceptor to a factory in Banbury, give the man there a cheque for £105,000, and in exchange, he will fit a Corvette engine, new brakes, new interior, better rear suspension, and you end up with that. So that's all new underneath? Yeah, yeah it's basically a new on. car. But oh. you actually be able to say to your wife, Shall we take the Interceptor tonight, darling? <laughs> you just, you want to do that. Now, I've changed my name to Captain Stingray, if I... <laughs> that is an amazing-looking car. My grandfather yeah. used to build them. Oh, well, don't bother, then. Um, <laughs> in Birmingham, <laughs> yes. He did. Oh, now, listen. Chrysler is going to launch this uh, little £11,000 car in, in Britain. And the first thing you need to know about it is, it isn't a Chrysler. Well, <laughs> no, no, what it is, OK, what happens is, here's the story. Fiat make the Fiat at the 500, OK? They then give that to Lancia, who make it a bit longer and add two rear doors. And then Lancia give that to Chrysler, who take the Lancia badges off, put Chrysler ones on, and they're going to sell it in Britain. Exactly. <laughs> so Fiat have actually got as far as recycling their cars before they've even sold them. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not a car at all, it's kind of an archaeological dig. Because you buy one, scratch away at the badge, and underneath you discover, ah, yes, it was a Lancia. And then if you go a bit further, you'll find it was a Fiat. You're not just a Fiat 500, because if you actually keep going, you find it's a Fiat Panda, which is effectively what it is. Dig a bit further and you'll find a load of coins and a bronze helmet. <laughs> some bones. Yeah, the pilt down man is in the glove box yes. of that <laughs> car. Let's make it go away, because more importantly, Aston Martin... OK, have launched a new car this week called the Virage. The idea is it fits between the quite soft and comfy DB9 and the much more expensive DBS. Fantastic looking thing. Um, I mean, what is there to say? It's going to cost apparently around £150,000 V12 engine. Absolutely perfect. Just one thing underneath, of course, it is a Fiat 500. <laughs> <laughs> Because everything is. Because everything is. There's a new uh, lightweight Lamborghini, Gallardo Spider, has come along. Here it is. It's called the Performante. That's going to cost you a hundred and... Can't read that. Eight, what's that say? Hundred and... <laughs> you poor, knackered old goat. Yeah, yes, what is that? Hundred and eighty-eight thousand pounds. Hundred and eighty-eight thousand pounds. Top yes. speed, I do know, two hundred and one miles an hour. A serious point, if I may. Last year, we showed you a tribute to Ayrton Senna on Top Gear, a little film we made. Well, now there's a much longer one come out, uh, 90 minutes long, in fact, an incredible documentary. But it is, this is completely unmissable. I've got a clip for you here. I want you to have a look at this. And he'll be ranked among the all-time greats. Ayrton has a small problem. He thinks that he can't kill himself. And I think that's very dangerous. We are competing to win. And if you no longer go for a gap, you're no longer a racing driver. I was treated like a criminal. Their decision is my decision. I can't stand this. 
Walking away from the dark forces just doesn't become an option. I was not going to give up. Rio racing. That makes me happy. There's footage in that you just can't believe. I've got goosebumps. You do. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's just won an award, actually, at the Sundance Film Festival as Best Documentary, and I'm really not surprised. It's out in June. If you've got any heart, any soul at all, you've got to go and see it. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, moving on. Yes. Now, you know Breakfast News on the television? No, you not really. To them? Oh, no. Come on, you must. Well, yeah. earlier this week, they were running this story about cyclists mm -hmm. wearing video cameras on their, their crash helmets. Yeah. So that they can video, you know, examples of road rage and people cutting them up on their bikes. Mm, but cyclists deserve it. <laughs> I say that. <clears throat> well, they do deserve Just the other week. No, honestly, I'm, there I am sitting in a traffic jam in London, and a Frenchman, he was, tried to cycle between the pavement of my car, and after he'd removed most of the paint with the brake handle thing, he came round to the driver's door to tell me off in that silly accent French people have. What? A French accent? Yes, that. And I said to him, listen, if you just work hard, he could have a car. No, oh, you see, this is... You are exactly the reason why I want a camera on my bicycle helmet when I cycle. Why? So, when idiots like you get out of that car having cut me up... Who pays the road tax? Well... No, I'm sorry. I don't mind if cyclists want to come on the road with their silly Victorian distractions. I'm not bothered, OK? They're fine, but they must behave themselves. There are a few militant cyclists. I'll agree. They and you're one of No, they give us all about that. I'm not a militant cyclist. You are on a bicycle. Polite. You are a peach. <laughs> Actually, you're a peach most of the time, and you're, you're a big peach. You're just another fat car in his Mercedes. <laughs> that's a, and that's a pop at me for riding my bike to work, which is a perfect... Yeah, because you always ride your bike to work, don't you? Often. Yesterday, I saw you riding your bike to work, and I thought, that's amazing, that bicycle looks exactly like a 1967 Ford Mustang. Yeah, right. <laughs> always ride it, no. Uh, right, that is the end of the news.